Kam for a very interesting topic. This is artificial intelligence and technology. Mr. Zach Lima, founder and CEO of Waytime, an innovative technological company, is here with us, and he will talk about the topic of crowd management in sports. Mr. Klima, the floor is all yours. Great, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm very pleased to be here right now. And, you know, obviously with the COVID world that we live in, priorities have shifted quite a lot. And one of those priorities is, is crowd intelligence uh, when it comes to um, an arena or a stadium or um, a smart district, et cetera. And what was once seen when I first started wait time, what was once seen as a nice to have is now uh, gearing towards and transitioning to a need to have. And so when COVID hit, wait time's value um, was very much so augmented across the sports industry. So what we're seeing here is we are now a resurgence technology, a comeback technology um, to help reopen uh, buildings safely across the world. So I want to share my screen here um, and show you exactly how this, this works. So what we've done in the, in the sports industry is we've developed a number of patented algorithms, uh, four patented algorithms that we've developed that track and record the movement analysis of people in real time anonymously. And so whether it be a concession line or a restroom line or a retail line, or even a entry gate into a sports venue, um, we can, with our patented, we're the only company in the world uh, we're the leader in crowd intelligence, and we have patented algorithms that monitor these different environments in real time. And out there in the industry, a lot of people talk about AI, artificial intelligence, these buzzwords. Um, but you know, people don't necessarily understand it. They don't. Uh, they can't see it because it's invisible. So what I want to do here is to show you the artificial intelligence, show you how it works and to visually display it so you can understand um, you know, that wait time is and what we're doing out there and, and how we're the crowd intelligence leader globally. So the first thing that you see on the screen here is what we call our queuing algorithm. So what we do is we mount cameras above everywhere where there's a line. So as I mentioned to you, concessions, restrooms, et cetera. And so what we do is we mount cameras above the line and we're tracking each individual person, not their Bluetooth, their cell phone, their Wi-Fi. That's all very remedial uh, uh, technology, very inaccurate. What we're doing is we are tracking the actual human body. So the head, the shoulders, the arms. And this is what you see on the screen here. So all the circles and all the tracking is all of our patented algorithms. And so as you see here, what we're, what we're tracking is we're tracking the speed of direction of each person, that's inches per second. We're tracking the direction of movement because we place each person on an X and Y plane. And we do all this 10 to 15 times per second so we can determine the candidacy for if you're in line, if you're just passing through the area, or are you actually just kind of congregated off to the side. Uh, this is this is why our artificial intelligence now is the crowd leader. And that's when the, the last algorithm that I showed you, that's when you have more of a free-flowing environment, um, which now uh, the second algorithm that you see on the screen here is called our stanchion algorithm. The stanchion algorithm is going to be much more prevalent these days because you'll have an organization below the line, the ropes, the stanchions, et cetera. And so the output for these algorithms, these first two, is number of people in line and number of people in a certain area. So this is important because now operations, they're able to receive this real-time, real crowd intelligence uh, information to make smart decisions on the fly based off of where people are in real time. So those are the first two. 
The, the, the third one here is what we call our massing technology. So the massing technology, artificial intelligence, we're tracking the occupancy density of a given area from a 0% capacity filled all the way up to 100% capacity filled. So this is when you have you know, very low ceiling heights. Uh, we can tap into pre-existing cameras um, as part of our solution. That's, that's um, not, a, not a huge part of our solution, but that's definitely something that we can do with this algorithm, which is called massing. Now the fourth and final, this is, I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about this. In response to COVID, we've developed a fourth and final algorithm called entry exit. So the entry exit software, what we're, what we're doing here is we are monitoring the ins and the outs of any room or environment, as you see here with our artificial intelligence. So what we're doing is we are tracking real-time room capacity uh, you know, every tenth of a second. So this is actually at an exhibition hall. We, we help to reopen uh, buildings across the world with some of our bigger, bigger partners out there. For example, we're now Cisco's go-to crowd management solution and Intel's globally. Uh, so we're helping to reopen these venues now um, for compliance software. So if they get fined or if they get audited on uh, real-time capacities of these different areas, they rely on our software to, to give the governmental bodies hard data on um, you know, their different environments and their behaviors. So this ex entry exit algorithm is probably one of the most impactful right now when it comes to our solution because every building out there, whether it be in Detroit, Michigan, or Athens, Greece, um, it has to be monitored with real-time capacity. And this is, this is what that software looks like here. So this is, uh, these are the four algorithms that we've developed just to kind of unveil artificial intelligence and what it looks like for you um, on, the, on the outside. And this is the back end. So this is kind of the secret sauce behind wait time. Um, this is what's patented. Uh, this is what is now being scaled across the world from an operational standpoint. But there, we do have, uh, what we have is what we call our front end uh, part of our system, which is the guest facing or patron facing. So if you look on the screen here, fans all around the arena or stadium, we've all been there. We, everyone hates waiting in line. At, at very pivotal decision-making locations of am I going right as a fan or am I going left, what we have is our real-time intelligent wayfinding digital signage that you see in the upper left-hand corner. So what this is, these are 65 inch and above screens. These are TVs that we mount at those decision-making locations and driven by our back-end artificial intelligence that I just showed you, these boards will show you concessions to the right and to the left and restrooms to the right and to the left and what the wait times are in that green, yellow, red spectrum bar analysis that's all being fed by our back-end AI. So what we've done is we've created a first in the world interior and exterior environment traffic system for people and now in the light of COVID, this is transformed into a health and safety system. So knowing where to go and having operations know where people are going and what they're doing is of the most um, you know, importance out there. So this is on a digital display end, um, is, which is a really pivotal part of our front end of our system. Now, if you look on the middle of the screen here, we also integrate this technology, our technology, into the team's mobile application. So fans at their seat can scroll across the entire arena or stadium and see what the wait times are at their fingertips in real time. So as a fan, uh, we, we, you know, we address the biggest dissatisfier, which is waiting in line. But as time is going on, this is becoming a health and safety concern. So where you see a, a, a red line, um, you know, with our system, that's a very large risk zone for people. So, so the narrative now is not about finding the shortest line, it's navigating the concourses safely as a fan in this, in this light of COVID. 
So these are on the first, these are on the, the guest facing elements. And lastly, we have, as I mentioned to you from the, the showing the first four AI algorithms, is we have a very robust crowd intelligence reporting system. So this is not um, a, a report based off of Bluetooth pinging, Wi-Fi pinging, um, tr cell phone tracking, triangulation of APs in an environment. This is very detailed artificial intelligence uh, data when it comes to actually tracking the you know um, crowd intelligence through people. So what you see here on the screen, this is a snapshot of a data report. So what, what it'll show you is, it'll show you each area that we monitor, so line fryer, blue zone, burgers, Sierra cone, et cetera. And it'll show you from the start of the, start of the event to the end of the event and what the real time crowd behavior is in that area. So it'll show you doors opening, this is for a hockey arena that we do. Doors opening, ingress, puck drop, intermission one, intermission two. So it shows you that real time crowd behavior, which it, we also take screenshots on the right hand side of what those peak times are. So peak times are very important because why is it a peak time? Um, was, there, was there something that happened that you now can visually see because you have our cameras, uh, et cetera. So what this does is this is a real time, um, real crowd intelligence data reporting set. So operations can now make adjustments in real time based off of new COVID protocols. Um, they can make, this is a complete behavioral report of your concourse. So you can start to see, well, you know, the craziest thing, maybe that trash can was in the way and that caused congestion. Or where you have the longest lines, that's where we're gonna start to station, um, you know, Purell hand sanitation machines, et cetera. So knowing where the people are with actual intelligence that we've developed, um, as I mentioned, I, I kind of reemphasize that, you know, this is not Bluetooth, cell phone, or any of that cellular triangulation. This is very detailed. Um, off the body tracking. So we're able to very get very detailed and accurate, and accuracy is really the key here, is accurate information based off of what crowds are actually doing, real crowd intelligence, not fake crowd intelligence. So this is um, a very detailed report to show you what this looks like. Um, and so this is from an operations side on the back end, uh, marrying that with the front end with what the guest or the fan sees um, and everything working in conjunction with each other. You know, that's, that's why we're able to, to not just open, you know, arenas and stadiums safely, but this is about convention centers, malls, any large public environment that we now go into uh, with the utmost confidence, we're able to open up this, these venues and, in, in, um, you know, with a high degree of confidence and with a high degree of accuracy and precision to know exactly what's happening inside your stadium or your arena. So at a Reader's Digest level, this is uh, an overview of Wait Time's artificial intelligence solution. Um, and, and as I mentioned to you, you know, we are a group of entrepreneurs within the company, around, around 35 entrepreneurs ranging from uh, Jeffrey Michael Jordan, who's Michael Jordan's oldest son, to our head of technology, who is uh, the global leader of imaging technology. He owns about half the world market. So we're constantly coming up with new use cases of our technology uh, further than what you just saw here on the screen. But um, really cool stuff that you see here, which is actually for this is for uh, the USTA tennis tournament, we were tracking the real-time stand capacities for general admission seating. So as you see here, this kind of crowd intelligence when it comes to a campus environment is very important because fans need to navigate to where there are there is open seating in general admission seating for grandstands. So as you see here, I'll zoom in here. We're using our massing technology to you know, because you want to find where the shortest or not the shortest lines, but the least crowded 
areas are for seating because you want to be able to sit down. Um, and so this shows you um, all really different cool use cases of our technology when it comes to this grandstand software that we call. And so we innovate this with our partners out there. And so we're able to provide, you know, more uh, granularity and detail and value, um, you know, based off of things that we haven't done before, but we come up with new use cases all the time. So anyway, I'll, I'll pause there. I'll stop there. And uh, um, yeah, th thank you. And if you have any questions, please, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. Mr. Kima, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation, a very informative one. I had quite a few unknown words there, which I will not dig deeper. I would like to thank you personally because uh, in the first front runners, uh, a guest lecturer had presented the case of uh, wait time uh, in between his speech on artificial intelligence and how this improves the customer experience. Uh, my students whom I have referred and I have uh, navigated to your website uh, did not believe me. So I now have your full material to get back to them in classroom. Uh, we have uh, many questions in the audience, but first of all, uh, what I would like to personally ask is uh, you have discussed some pa patterns in peak times. So I guess yeah. that there are some very obvious uh, patterns in peak times like halftime where uh, fans have the opportunity to visit other uh, areas in the, at the stadia. What other patterns do we see in peak times? Yeah, so that's a great question. So um, what we always say at wait time is you can't, you don't know what you don't measure. And, you know, we get, when I first started the company, we would we'd get these, um, head of technologies that have been there for 20 years and they say, oh, I know my concourse better than anyone. You know, I know how everything behaves, um, kind of an old school way of thinking. And so once we got into these venues, um, well, after people got over their uh, aversion to wait time, just because it puts a, um, they thought it put a, mic uh, put a microscope over their operations, they were able to identify things they never even thought of. So for example, um, you know, when it comes to stanchions or people entering a line, uh, this flow of this one concourse of the stadium that we're in, um, the majority of fans turn left as, as they, as they went from the vomitories to the concourse, the majority of fans turn left, which we were able to, to recognize with our software. So the entrances to these lines were actually parallel with the flow of traffic. So people were getting in line without, it's like a fish being caught in a net. They weren't even knowing they were in line. And then they were, and they were like, oh, I'm in line. I'm going to fall out of line. So our, our software was sending alerts to say, something's wrong here. There's a lot of attrition, people falling out of line. So with that being said, that caused a huge peak time that then that caused a, a rapid spike and a rapid drop. Just as one example. Another example that I'll, that I'll mention here is we work very intimately with food and beverage companies across the world, big food and beverage companies. And they did a big study in our software to say, okay, we have a long line. Uh, this is not the right time for a long line to happen because we generally know our operations. Um, so they use our software, our dashboard to, to, to understand, okay, um, they're able to see on, on the dashboard, okay, this is nothing is visually wrong. So they went to the back of kitchen and realized that they were adding, this is the craziest thing, as small as this, they were adding lettuce and tomatoes on each hamburger, which that's supposed to be a special order, which was adding 13 seconds per order and per person in line who was ordering this. And that extra 13 seconds per person was causing this big backup, which ultimately caused a peak time to be identified. So from a high level, all the way down to this granular, granular low level, um, you're able to identify these peak times that you would have no idea about. And so they were, they actually knew that they found out that this um, lettuce and tomato situation was going on for five months, five months, which sounds silly, sounds small, but that that's eats up inventory that causes unnecessary peak times 
and that cuts down on your, your speed of service. And indeed, what a bullwhip effect of lettuce and tomato having in terms of wait time, right? Who could imagine uh, an exploratory way to go back to the supply chain and the logistics? We have one more question from the audience. Um, wondering what is the role of infrastructure in all AI application, and of course, in your case, and whether there are ethical concerns like, for example, uh, breaches of privacy that should be discussed, be mentioned? Yeah, that's a great question. And we get that all the time. And so when it comes to the privacy concern, uh, so first and foremost, we're GDPR compliant, so privacy laws, especially in the UK. What we're doing is we're looking at the tops of your heads, your shoulders, your arms. So we don't know that that's Bob and Sally. We know that that's an X and that's a Y. So we anonymize all of our tracking. We actually don't even store video. So the infrastructure component to our system is very lightweight. It's, it's high CPU, low GPU. So our system, once we tie into a network, um, when it comes to wait time, our system is very lightweight and we're GDPR compliant because um, you know, we're not looking at faces. We don't do any facial recognition um it's all anonymized tracking so that's a great question um we get it all the time so we ride on the safe side of invasive non-invasive because we don't know that could be for example we could train our software to look at a dog a per a, you know obviously we're doing we're doing people but a dog a car any moving object um you know this is very detailed artificial intelligence when it comes to pixel tracking uh, not object recognition. So we're on the safe side of GDPR and very compliant. Uh, interesting and very informative and thank you for sharing. What about the first part of the question regarding the infrastructure requirements? You know, in Greece, yeah. Stadia are not as advanced uh, as in right. the United States. Yeah, so that's a great question. And what we have, we've made our system very lightweight. So Basically, what it is, is it's not Wi-Fi dependent at all. What it is a camera, it's just an off-the-shelf camera. It's, it's uh, Cat 5E or Cat 6 cable connected, so PoE to each camera, which go back to our servers that are hosted on site. So as long as you have a network that we can tie into, um, we're good to go. And um, buildings, you know, it doesn't have to have a robust Wi-Fi system, doesn't have to have a robust, um, this or that, as long as you have a network, we can tie into it because we've designed our system to be very lightweight. Um, for all the crazy techies out there, it's around 300K per second per camera. So that's literally zero data transmission. It does not bog down your network in any way, shape or form. So we've designed our system because for example, we're in Australia with the Melbourne Cricket Ground, which was built in the 1800s, very old stadium. Uh, so we've designed our system to accommodate a very new stadium like the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas where the Golden Knights play hockey and a very old stadium, which is one of the oldest and biggest in the world, which is the Melbourne Cricket Ground. So we've designed our system to not rely on uh, anything that's, you know, um, it has to be, you know, 2021, 2022 type of technology infrastructure. We've designed it so we can blend in with uh, the major the mass majority of infrastructures that pre-exist now in sports venues around the world. So I'm going to follow up with a question uh, from the audience by Nikos Kapnoulas. Uh, he's wondering whether uh, the right time for you to uh, design the wait time system is when a venue is actually building. Great question. And the answer is, um, the best time to implement wait time is every time, <laughs> but yes, you're exactly right. Uh, when, when you're in the building phase, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right because they can spec it in um, you know, from the building design. So we're actually working now with world leading architecture firms to address exactly what you just asked, which is from the, the, from the when it's on paper, on blueprints for the electrical design, you know, will be put in from the start 
And so they can design what architects and designers now are doing is they are designing concourses around the data that they receive from wait time from other venues around the world. So it took us years to get there, but now we are there and um, it is much easier and cost effective when they build in, you know, our system from the start or anything from the start. It, it's, it's much more cost effective to, to do that than the retro retrofit, but you know, it's not like we're ex too expensive anyway, but it's more, it's more streamlined when it's from the start. Correct. This is a, a correct observation and a very good clarification there. We have a lot of questions that uh, follow the one that I'm going to post now. Until recently, wait time uh, was a tool to help venues and organizations improve fan experience. Uh, but now with the COVID-19 crisis, it has become a health regulation tool as well, right? How ready was wait time for such a radical change to its strategy? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and the answer is we've spent the last four years. Um, we, we didn't, we didn't want to scale too fast when it comes to our, uh, the business side of the equation, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of, uh, you know, s startup companies, which we were at the time, they, they want to grow fast. They want to, they want to achieve high revenue numbers fast. We took the complete opposite approach where we wanted to build the most bulletproof product out there and battle test it for years and years to make sure that it works in Australia, um, Japan, New Zealand, the UK, uh, United States, um, before we really started to scale. And so we spent the past four years um, debugging, getting the kinks out of our system, et cetera. So to answer your question in a long-winded format is yes, we were very ready for it. And um, it actually, you know, it turned us from, uh, oh, this is a luxury item. This is a luxury thing that's only the innovators are going to adopt, like Miami Heat, et cetera, into uh, this is a more standardized building system technology, uh, to your point. So the answer to your question is yes, we were very ready for it. Um, the, the, the pivoting, it wasn't necessarily a pivot of our product because we've always been crowd, uh, the, the leader in crowd intelligence solution. Um, uh, and even, you know, years before COVID. And so we were ready for it for a long time coming. Um, but it's kind of funny now, it's pretty opportunistic to see, you know, some companies now change their marketing to identify, you know, the response from COVID, uh, where we were actually there, you know, f five years prior. So um, I would say, you know, once we started to really battle test the system globally with, we've seen, you know, hundreds of thousands of different line formations to over a hundred million fans that we've helped assist. Um, I would say that we're, we were more than ready. Uh, this question could be also uh, asked the other way around. And this is one uh, that I would like to bring your attention that bringing in mind that, uh, Due to the COVID circumstances, uh, there are measures that have forbidden the gathering of large crowns. Does this make any? Does this result in any adjustments on the services that you offer or planning to offer in the future? Um, yeah. So that's a, uh, a absolutely. So our system is very flexible. So from whether it be a small crowd of you know a couple hundred people all the way up to 125,000 people at the same time. We've developed different tiers of our system. And so, you know, fans not being in arenas, um, everyone says, okay, well, you know, fans are not in arenas. How can, how can wait time provide value right now uh, in this world that we live in? Um, and the answer is you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan in place when it comes to uh, reopening strategy, whether it be a small crowd or a large crowd, um, all the, the value across this side of the equation, when it's a couple hundred people to this side of the equation, the, you know, the poor opposite, which is 130, 125,000 people, is you have to have a plan of action where wait time provides value from this side to this side. So our system is tiered uh, when it comes to um, the different services that we provide. 
Um, but, you know, whether it be a small crowd or a large crowd, what COVID and the world that we live in now help to have us define is the different levels of our service um, when it comes to our system and the different way that we deliver the, the, the data, whether it be on X, Y, or Z, um, the different levels that we deliver it and the different ways we deliver it in, in a certain light or, or the narrative that we tell um, was, was really defined over the past eight months um, with our partners like Cisco or Intel that are helping to uh, position us around the world. Thank you so much. It's really challenging in, uh, in, in all terms and aspects of your business, both strategic wise, development of softwares and so on. There is another question that has to do with uh, software development and asking what has been the biggest challenge in developing a software that actually ensures health and safety in such demanding times? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so when we first started, I mean, this software is really hard to build, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. Um, imaging technology, when we first started, imaging and computer vision was something that processing power uh, wasn't even, a, wasn't even um, feasible to, to do when it comes to our software. So we were three years ahead of the market. Our head of technology um, owns about half the world market with a technology he invented about 20 years ago in imaging. So large format printers, long story short, but large, he digitized the printing process. And so he and his foresight and his uh, wherewithal, he was able to get ahead of um, all the concerns of processing power uh, concerns at that point in time. So he was able to work in the future when it because of his expertise. Um, and so the really the, the hardest thing is when you get into um, a sales situation, when you build a product, what we had to do was we had to build a team, we had to build the product, we had to um, battle test the product to make sure that accuracy was of the utmost, of the highest, uh, and then build the market and then build the partnerships. So we had to literally create this entire market of crowd intelligence, which to your point in terms of software development is incredibly hard to do because everyone wants anything new people are going to be um, resistant to whether it be a tech especially technology but really anything people are just naturally averse to change unless you think differently um, and you're progressive so everyone challenges uh, in the beginning everyone challenged our accuracy are you guys accurate do you guys act if you say that there's 37 people in line, is there 37 people in line? So we get a lot of naysayers in the beginning, but as time went on um, and, and people started to really do a deep dive into the software, they started to really, wow, this, this is impactful, this is accurate. And it takes a while for people to see that, but you know, the accuracy, to answer your question, the accuracy is probably the most important challenge um, and I, I wouldn't call it a challenge. It's actually a really good thing to have these people uh, either challenge us or naysay us or whatever it may be. Um, it was a really healthy thing to go through because, you know, it just got us to prove them wrong faster. But accuracy is probably the most, uh, most uh, mar uh, momentous uh, challenge that we've had, uh, which we were able to overcome swiftly. To be honest, I cannot even imagine how hard this could be to develop a software as accurate as you have described and thoroughly uh, showcased it during your presentation. Uh, Mr. Klima, I would like to thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, you offer very avant-garde knowledge to our attendees. Uh, it was an honor having you with us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.